It's not convenient to run either, particularly on a desert road. I mean, you're exhausted from the journey and now God is asking you to run? Okay, I'll run. But what's the point? You're asking me to go up to a chariot. It's the person in the chariot. And God knows that person. Can I encourage you here today that if God speaks to you and says, step across the room, God is also preparing that other person as well. You don't know their story, but God knows their story. You don't know what their questions are going to be, but God has already placed you there. Nobody can replace you. You are unique. You are individual. You are called. You say, oh, I'll just wait for somebody else to come along and actually do that. No. God is calling you. Step out in faith, knowing that the person that you will meet after having to run to the chariot will be there because you are supposed to have some form of conversation. Maybe some form of ministry. Ministry can then flow the love of God out of you and into another person. Isn't that just amazing? This Ethiopian is trying to get close to God. And so he's reading, and it says in Scripture that he's reading from the book of Isaiah. But if we look at the passage that's actually quoted there, it's from chapter 53. And that's a very remarkable chapter in the book of Isaiah. Because the whole book is hope, promise. And it's not just for the poor, the sick, the lame, the outcasts. You know, all of us here. But it also speaks to the person, the eunuch. And how he is also outcast. And so there's hope and there's promise that is found and particularly in 53 because it's prophesying about the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. His redemption of each and every one of us making a way on this desert road to reach out to each and every one of us, wherever we find ourselves. I don't know your story today. God does. I don't know where you are with your walk with God. Maybe you've turned your back on him. Perhaps you've been walking closely in the past, but maybe not so closely now. Maybe you're like Philip and you're gun ho That's great. Can I encourage each and every one of us, wherever we find ourselves before Jesus, He's there right beside you. He's right here beside you this morning. He's reaching out like he reached out to the unit. And Philip, he's positioned and he hears the words. It's then when he's actually positioned that he gets to hear the words. It's the wow God moment, isn't it? And I think we would look over our lives and say there has been some wow God moments already. And we need to look forward to those wow God moments. Wow God. He's already reading. And so he actually invites Philip up. If there's anything that you write down today, can you write this out for me? Be on the lookout for those that are lost. And be listening out from these three things that people say. And you can write them down. Things are not going well. Ever felt that way? Things are not going well. Or, I was not prepared for. And finally, I'm not from here. And I think the eunuch actually follows each and every one of these. I'm not from here, I'm actually from Ethiopia. And things aren't going well for me because I've travelled all this way and the temple was shut to me. And I was not prepared for this journey that has left me more discouraged than encouraged because I thought I'd find God but it was on a desert road. On a desert road. Not in a temple. On a desert road that this Ethiopian's life is impacted. And I love how then Philip uses those three things that he's obviously gleaned from the heart of this man and he asks a simple question. Do you understand 
what you are reading. Do you understand what you're reading? And he's asked it in a humble tone. Don't you understand what you're reading? Do you understand what you're reading? And the Ethiopian replies, how can I unless somebody guides me? How can I? Each and every one of us has been called to reach out to somebody. And we need to be in a position beside people to guide them to Jesus. Guide them to Jesus, just like Philip did. Taking advantage of this invitation to come up into the chariot. I know you and I would say, "Ah, yes, have you got some water as well? This is going to be a cruise. But Philip understood the ministry. Taking the opportunity, he then first listens to the Ethiopian. What are you reading? It's this, it's that. What, 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 who, is, who is this author talking about? Is he talking about himself or is he talking about someone else? Confusion. But he starts, Philip starts where the man was. And that ministry then continues when he introduces the Ethiopian to Jesus, explaining how Jesus now fulfills the prophecies in Isaiah. Isn't that amazing? And God is our Saviour, our King. He took on a cross for our sins and our iniquities. Those things that have separated us from God, He is now our Redeemer. He has stepped out and reached out towards us. And now we live in His victory. The victory of the cross which gives us eternal life. And each one of the recipients will be demonstrating that. As they go under the water, it's demonstrating that their old life is now dead. And as they're lifted out, they're lifted out now into the victory that is Jesus Christ, their Lord and Saviour. As he was dead, he is resurrected. And so they will also be resurrected to new life in him. Can you imagine that story being told to the Ethiopian for the very first time? That good news that's been shared with him, that it's... Jesus that fulfills that prophecy. It's him that has made the way. You don't have to worry about a temple anymore. He now indwells within each and every one of us. And we are now his temple. Isn't that awesome? We need to reach out to people. And start where the other person is. Maybe they've got concerns and maybe you're thinking, I don't know if I've got all the answers. It's okay. The Holy Spirit is there with you. Start with their concerns, what they're focused on. And then illuminate what God's Word has to say. There's a plan and there's a future for each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. Can I enjoy, uh, Can I invite the uh, band to join me back on stage? Can I ask you a challenging question today? It's actually the question the Ethiopian asks of Philip in verse 36. What can stand in the way? The Ethiopian says, Here's water. What can stand in the way? Here's water. What can stand in your way of taking the next step towards Jesus Christ? And I know that our flesh starts making a list, doesn't it? I'm not good enough. I don't think I'm called. I don't think God could possibly use me. But when we take that step out onto the desert road, just like Philip, We find everything that we need is provided in the journey. It almost lands in your lap, just like Philip. And when you stay near, as God's word encourages us, we begin to realize that there is nobody else who can be the friend, who can be a relative, who can be a colleague, 
And for that reason, God has called you. You can't be replaced. So can I encourage you to step out? Step out towards God first and then towards others. And God can use each and every one of us. Anyone led by Him. Taking a step out and being available for the Holy Spirit. Sharing ourselves with others. Sharing what we believe and who Jesus is in our lives is something only you can do. And it is unique to you. So God is calling all of us. And the way is filled with possibilities. Can we pray? We thank you, Lord, that you are here right beside us. Holy Spirit, we pray that you continue to use us each and every day, wherever we find ourselves. You're calling us. Holy Spirit, allow us to be more sensitive to your prompting. Remind us, Jesus of the remarkable day when we first accepted you as Lord and Saviour. That remarkable day when we laid down all our broken 